I'm Sydney Picks from Madison Studios. We also, at our studio, do wedding photography under the name of Be Creative. Now today, we're going to look at what is wedding photography, and it's recording a family's history and catching the emotions and the moments of the day. Today, we're going to look at wedding equipment and what the checklist is you need to have, props for the wedding, we need to look at the groom getting ready, the bride getting ready. We're going to look at what happens at the church, the bridal group shots, what we have to do there with and without the bride, wedding shoot ideas, because you can't go to a location and have no ideas. You've got to understand every shot before you get there. We're going to look at how to shoot the reception. We're also going to look at tips and marketing. What we're going to look at now is your wedding equipment checklist. You must make yourself a list so you it's a reminder the day before have everything together ready. What I've got on my checklist for someone just starting out would be the following. You'd need two cameras. One camera you can keep around your neck and the other you're shooting with because if one camera fails the wedding won't stop. You've got to have another one to pick up and start shooting and it should be ready to go. Maybe you could have black and white in one and coloured film in the other and keep interchanging throughout the day. You'd have two lenses because often one lens can fail you or you want a wide angle lens and a zoom lens. Batteries. You may be using a digital camera or your actual film 35mm camera might take batteries. Take spare batteries and take spares of spares. You can't have too many spares of batteries and equipment at a wedding. You'll need a flash for the top of your camera and maybe the little soft box we talked about. Remember if you're using digital camera you'll need digital cards and you may need to have a digital Xbox drive that you can burn cards down onto or have enough cards to last you the day. You might they come in 256 512 cards or 1 meg cards. 1 meg would do a whole wedding. If you're using film it's great to take uh, 400 speed film and maybe a couple of rolls of uh, 100 uh, speed film. With the 400 you probably need 10 to 15 rolls to be on the safe side. You need a tripod but don't forget the adapter. Screw it on the bottom of your camera before you go. You can't forget the adapter to go with the tripod. A monopod is a single pole that you can just quickly drop down and shoot with. That's often a good idea too and sometimes they have a different adapter for the top of that. Make sure you've got that separate adapter. Lens caps are very important. We don't want any dust getting inside the camera or on the front of the lenses. A ladder, it may be a small ladder. You might have a van or a small car and fit a small ladder inside. It's great for the pose shots where you can get up high looking down on a group or the whole church group. You might need to get up and get on the top of a roof for instance and get a whole shot of everybody looking up at you. They can make good shots but remember safety. You also need a list of props and to bring all your props. Pose cards. Now we'll look at the pose cards later. And the pose cards is simply a little book about the size of uh, a business card book and we've cut out photos and put them in there to remind us of photos that we want to get on the day. Maybe some flexiglass uh, mirror in black and this can often be great. We only need a piece two foot by one foot or a couple of feet wide and we put the shoes, the flowers, other little important things that you might want to photograph that will give reflection without being a mirror. And we'll look at that a little bit later. What we're now going to look at is props for weddings. Now most wedding photographers take no props at all. They just photograph whatever's happening on the day. But to be a good wedding photographer, plan your shots, take along props. It helps the shot. This list of props I'm going to read to you now, I'm just going to discuss them quickly and let you know what I'm taking and why I'm taking then later I'll tell you what shots I'm going to be using them for. I'm going to take two umbrellas, a red umbrella, a blue umbrella and I may even throw in a cream umbrella. Why am I taking an umbrella? 
If it's a very hot sunny day, I might put a cream umbrella over the bride to soften that harsh light coming in and it'll give a beautiful shot. Again, if it's raining, I'm going to put a red umbrella in the uh, bride's hand, a blue umbrella in the groom's hand, and they can both hold the umbrella looking back at me. A great shot for what would be a miserable day, a miserable shot. I'm going to take a, a streamer, that's a, a long piece of silk with a little stick, and a bride can be just walking or holding that in the wind and it can look a fabulous shot. Uh, she can be just on a field or around some greenery of an oval, it, it looks great. A handheld fan, this is she can be hide half of her face, all of her face, a little bit, it's a great shot. A cream fan, nothing too memorable. You don't want a lot of Japanese writing or anything over it that can be um, distracting. A cream van, uh, fan would be great. A handheld mirror. Now it can be one of these, now it can be just cheap plastic, uh, but it looks chrome and it looks like one of these 18th century mirrors where the, the bride's holding the mirror, putting on a lipstick. That's a great shot. It's a prop. What props do is help the bride relax and give her something to do in the shot so they're not just looking there very stiff. Uh, you can take some rope. I'm going to take some rope. We're going to tie it around the bride and the groom with all the groomsmen pulling the rope this way, all the bridesmaids pulling the rope that way, looking as though we're tying the knot. Now that's a fun shot, the bride and groom standing in the middle, arm in arm, with a rope tied around them, with the other guys leaning down, pulling on the rope. Small flowers are great to take, especially dried flowers when we're shooting the marriage certificate. We put the marriage certificate down, a few dried flowers or a single rose, we borrow the rings off the bride and groom, put them on, focus on the rings, everything else goes a little bit out of focus. Great shot for the uh, wedding certificate. We also take a bottle of wine or champagne and some glasses. You just need about, you need to take about six tall long stem uh, wine or champagne glasses because you might be shooting at a beach. Uh, they've forgotten to bring everything. You can have the bottle of wine or champagne, you can focus in on that, have the bride and groom, the wedding party in the background, slightly out of focus, proposing a toast. We can also take a towel, a black towel or a cream towel, because most of the time when we get the bride to sit down, she's going to be sitting on dirt, rocks, something's uneven, and she's just paid uh, for a very expensive dress, so put a little black towel or a cream towel first so it's hidden by the dress but she's got something warm to sit on. Sparklers are great at dusk. A sparklers can be lit and she can actually move them but you have to shoot it slow, have the, the uh, bride standing still. Now you can practice this at home before you go and the actual movement of the sparkler will light the bride. A single red lily, a single lily a cream lily or a red rose for smelling the red rose is a great photo or holding a simple lily just down by her side. Um, I'm going to take a picture frame. This is a frame just for a picture. I'm taking the picture out, having no back and have the bride and groom hold the picture frame looking through it. That can be a fun shot. Strawberries and a plate with a bit of icing sugar on top. You can have the bride just eating those, looking around at the bridesmaids. That's a fabulous shot very inexpensive prop. Always take blue tack because you don't know what you've got to stick up in the background or whenever you need it. Uh, take a, a tube of lipstick that they can use for putting makeup on. Uh, you can also buy bubbles so you can blow some bubbles or get someone to blow some bubbles near the bride and groom for a shot. Some black cotton is great because you can tie a little bit of black cotton onto the edge of a veil and have someone just pull the veil out if there's no wind. And that can look great that the veil's flying out. Purple background, uh, just a sheet of uh, A3 purple paper or a couple of sheets or card. And this is used, we can put the flowers on there and take photos with a lovely background. Two candles and a lighter because the bride and groom can actually hold the candle and it shows up light. Some uh, white gloves, because not many people wear white gloves anymore, but it can be great to put some white gloves on for a couple of particular shots. You might have a, a lovely chair at home, a steel chair or a stool that you might think is great to help posing. Put it in the back of the car because you never know when 
you'll use that sort of a thing maybe at the beach where you need the bride to be not kneeling, not sitting, but up a little bit. Um, a compact camera can be great where you can give it to the bride and groom to pretend they're taking a photo of themselves. Now we're going to look at the groom prior to the ceremony. This is some of the first shots you'll take of the whole wedding. When you get to the groom's house, you may uh, find some casual shots of the groom, uh, like playing an instrument, he might play saxophone or guitar, ask him what he does or if he has a hobby, and take some photos of him uh, either playing the guitar or the saxophone, something like this. Whatever his hobby is, try and have that part of the photography. Photograph the groom and the groomsman getting ready, actually getting dressed, putting shoes on, uh, shirts untucked, shirts hanging up, uh, people doing each other's ties up, etc. Uh, take photos of the groom and the groomsman talking, just natural shots without them posing. You don't want any of these shots posed. Take photos of the groom and the best man, talking, intimate moments, just discussing what's happening ahead. Close face-up portraits of each person are necessary here. Try and get them daylight shots without the flash if possible. Now shots of anything special that they're wearing. They might be wearing their father's cufflinks for instance. Zoom in, get a lovely close-up of that because as a collage later in their wedding album, that, those sort of photos will look great. The best man can be holding open the, uh, the, the box of rings, showing the rings. That can be a great shot. He can be out of focus as long as those rings are nice, crisp and clear. Uh, get photos of the best man adjusting the groom's tie. That's a lovely shot. We also need uh, a photo of the uh, leaving to go to church. Now, that may be a fake shot. They might be not leaving for an hour. Or, or an hour and a half, go and get the shot as though they are leaving, but get them to go back inside and not leave to go to the church at this stage. But it's important for you to leave there and get to the church or get to the bride's place early enough to get the shots that you want there. Now, for this groom getting ready, you want to take at least a hundred shots at this stage. We're now going to look at the bride getting ready. We've taken the photos of the groom getting ready and they can be done early in the day. Now with the bride getting ready, we've got to find a number of things happening. She's got to have her hair done. Now she might want photos done at the hairdressers or the hairdresser might even come to where the bride is getting ready. Then there's the makeup. We need photos of the hair getting done and the makeup being applied. These are great. Also, during the day, we will also find that the bridesmaids are drinking and having a good time and saying a few jokes. Try and get all these uh, action shots happening on the day. Also, it's very important before the bride gets dressed, try and take the bride in various states of undress with some nice underwear. If she's a little bit uh, large or something, get her to hold the dress up just in front of it, just showing a little bit of the naked body with this nice underwear she may have for the day. Also, try and get photographs of the dress, maybe just in an empty cupboard. This might be uh, shot at 800 grainy film. You might want it black and white. These type of shots in black and white can look fabulous. You might get a shot of her holding her wedding shoes, which by themselves might be boring, but you get her to hold them over her shoulder and you shoot from behind and those wedding shoes will look fantastic. Now, remember to photograph all the flowers that are there, maybe on a purple background. Now, we want to get the bride holding the dress up and smiling and laughing at the bridesmaids. Now, the bridesmaids might be holding the other end of the dress up. We want to get photos of the bride putting the dress on and being helped to get it on. The bride putting on the garter, uh, the Bible can be another point of uh, interest if they're a religious, um, it's a religious ceremony being a wedding and they might have a Bible that they want to hold in their hand for the particular shot. A close up of the bride with natural light is very important at this stage. Um, always get photos of the bridesmaids ad uh, adjusting the dresses 
uh, of themselves and the bride because remember they are there to help the bride and we want to get plenty of action shots of them actually doing their job. We want to get photos of the bride's mother fixing the bride's dress because she wants to have input on the day. Very important to get those photos. Get photos of the bride looking in the mirror at herself, adjusting a her veil, maybe with the mother behind adjusting a veil. Then outside, while there's more of that going on and you've got enough photos, get some more photos of the her flowers in the car, on the car, in the seat of the car. We want photos of the bride leaving the actual house, leaving the door, the motel room, going to the car and getting into the car. Then we want to get a very quiet, peaceful moment of the bride looking out of the car with the father standing there, maybe with a hanky uh, wiping the bride's eyes because this is the last time he will see her unmarried. Also, we need to get photos of the bride inside the car with the father. Once you've got these photos, then proceed to the second wedding car, if there's a second wedding car where the bridesmaids are all in there, and the groomsmen. Get photos, the groomsmen will be at the church, get photos of the bridesmaids together in the car because later the groomsmen will join them. So this is the only time you'll get that photo too. Once you've got these photos, pack up, go straight to the church. Now these are photos we're going to get at the church before the bride has arrived. We want an external shot of the church. Even if you've got to stand at the other side of the road, get a lovely photo of the church. Then we need a photo of the church empty if possible before the guests have actually gone in. You may or may not get that shot at this time depending how long the bride took or if she's actually running late. You want to focus on getting uh, the pews, there might be some lovely ribbons or flowers on the sides, get some photos of those, start at the back with them slowly going out of focus down towards the front. You may get photos of the flowers done for the church because someone's put a lot of effort into doing these flowers and expense, get photos of those early before, while you can still move around before the uh, actual ceremony starts. We want to get photos of the groom talking and maybe laughing and joking with the minister and with the groomsmen standing up the front, everybody's nervous waiting, they're the shots we want. We want photos of the bride's mother on the usher's arm and photos of the groom's mother on an usher's arm being seated. We want photos of the, uh, the congregation, uh, various friends who have turned up, try and take them in blocks so you've got the whole church taken up. People arriving at the, at the church are candid shots. We need to get those shots as well. Uh, they can be black and whites outside. Always give a mixture of black and white and colour. You may have a close-up of a Bible in the church with an order of service. That can be a great photo because it will have the name of the, um, the groom and the bride on the front. You want to at least get a hundred shots prior to the bride coming into the church because you don't know what you're going to throw away and what will look good. Here at the church, we're going to pose the bride and the groom around the car. Firstly, we'll bring in the bride. Tamara, you come this way. We're going to position Tamara at the back of the car here. Now, we'll drag this around here. We're going to spread the dress out nicely so it falls well. Now be careful here not to get the dress dirty on exhaust pipes or anything like that. We're going to have the dress nice and full. We're going to have the bride maybe looking away over in this direction, holding the flowers just down, down by her side like that. Now we're going to introduce the uh, groom. Glenn, if you come this way. We're going to put the groom right at the end of the car. We'll get him to just stand here like this, looking at his bride, head turned to one side. You can do that, Glenn, thanks. Now we're ready for the shot. We're looking down at the bride, looking away, her mind somewhere else. We have the groom looking at this beautiful bride that he's just married. Sorry. Okay, now look away. 
What we have to do is be careful not to take every photo standing up high. We have to bring the camera down to about waist height with a lot of these photos so the bride doesn't look short. One important thing to remember is that exposed for the dress. We want to find this true colour here. It may blow out the, the uh, sky, but the important thing is to get the true colour of the, the dress and the bride's face. Your camera might be switched to automatic, but you may have a plus or minus on your exposure, and it's best to minus the light coming in just a little bit to get the exposure right. Don't forget, we're trying to shoot one person here is in white and the other person's in black and we're trying to get a balance between always shoot for the bride for the white dress because you get a lot of reflection there and the bride will always want to see detail in the dress no one's very interested in getting the detail of the groom's uh, suit okay I've asked the bride to sit in the car now and just looking in here I'm not getting a really good shot it's not glamorous enough so what I'm missing is the lovely edge of the car, the seats and the leather. So I'm going to ask Tamara to sit forward on the edge of the seat so she's not sitting right back in. It's not a good shot. Sit forward Tamara and lean on this. Uh, just one, one arm and lean down and look out the car a little bit. Now look at me Tamara. Okay, now we're going to move the bride again. We're going to have our arm outside the car, fingers spaced, or just push like that. Always ask permission to touch the bride. We'll bring this arm up in here and we'll get her to look out over there. That's a lovely shot. It's always good to not have the bride looking exactly at the camera or it looks too staged. This looks as though we've caught her in a moment. What we're trying to do here is we're getting a progression of shots. Now the bride has arrived in the car. If we're looking out at guests, uh, looking at her to see if the groom's here, who's here, and we're going to get photos of her progressively moving out of the car. We're going to ask Tamara now to start moving out. We'll open the door. Always help with the dress because uh, these dresses are very heavy. The bride's not used to wearing something like this. Now sit on the very edge of your seat and lean down there and still be just looking at us like that. Tilt the head the other way a little bit. That's it, lovely. Now I'm going to shoot this up close, then I'm going to shoot it from right back here and I'm going to come down on my knees to get the whole bride in. Again, we're using a flashlight with a soft box. These are an inexpensive LumiQuest, they're about $80, but it softens that harsh light and we're getting the whole bribe with a soft light here. It's normal for the chief bridesmaid or the father who's travelling in the car to come around and help the bride out of the car or today we have the driver of the car will help as well. So Dave, if you help her get out and we're going to sit Tamara onto the running board of the car. For this shot, we're going to get Tamara to sit on the running board of the car and we're going to take this photo from down low looking up. So we'll just sit Tamara in the, just down the corner there, It'll be lovely. Sideways, we don't want her sitting with the legs out, we want to get this a sideways picture. Again, we're going to spread, just wrinkle the dress up a little bit, make it look interesting. We might get you to even put your arm down like that and turn the head. See how Tamara's tilting the head like that? And always be aware of stray hairs on the face because that can cause you a lot of grief in uh, Photoshop or on film. It's going to remain. So see how she's looking down and dreaming of something else but the moment. So we'll take this photo now. Peter, can I have the camera? Again, I'm coming down nice and low for this and I'm looking up at the bride, trying to capture most of the dress. When 
we've uh, posed the bride, it's great to move around and get every angle possible because you don't know the shot that's going to really stand out at the end. So I'm going to move around, I'm going to take some from up, looking down. I'm also going to Tomorrow, I'll just look up over this way. Now we're also going to take photos looking down so we get a bit of the car because we're not interested in the whole car, it's the bride's face with a little bit of the car. Just look over there again. Now look up at me. When you take a photo of a bride, ask her to look away, then look to you and snap that picture right when she looks at you and it keeps the energy in the shot. What we're going to do now is pose Tamara at the front of the car so we're getting the lovely headlights, the grill of the car with her flowers looking back. Come around this way Tamara. And I'll get you to stand right at the corner. Standing at the corner is always better than standing at the front of the car. We want to stand at the corner, we fluff the dress out nicely and we get Tamara to hold the flowers up with the bow in the front. And we'll get her looking over this way a little bit this time. And with her arm, we'll get her to splay her arm out a little bit. Um, no more out there. Yeah, like that. With this shot, we want to get the whole of the dress in, always remembering the feet. And we want to also get a little bit of the ground in as well because the shot needs to be cropped sometimes but it, it wouldn't be good to have it here or here. We really need to get that extra depth in the shot. Also, it's a great shot now to get some close-ups. Because I've switched to a close-up shot now, we have to watch that the light from your flash isn't burning out the dress. Now there's two ways of doing this. If you want to be quick and the moment's fast, put your hand across most of the flash and shoot the flash. Secondly, adjust your camera, the light meter, you can adjust down to stop your film down. Beautiful. Different cameras have different ways of compensating for light. You can either, at the flash level, push the plus or minus. You can minus the amount of power coming out. You can simply turn your flash away to get it bouncing a little bit, just catching a little bit of light across, or your camera has a compensation on as well. But you really don't want to be doing something compensating for every single shot because eventually you'll forget where you're up to. So try and keep the camera normal and just twist your light away, reflect it in a bit, push it back in a little bit for more light or as I said cover a bit of the light not covering the lens. It's very important now to get a shot of the flowers inside the car without the bride or groom. I'm simply going to put these flowers, just lay them nicely on the seat to take a photo of these flowers, I'm going to bounce the flash off the ceiling of the car. And we've got a lovely picture, a warm look of the leather and the flowers with the bow, a timeless photo. And it's a great idea to take the photo again in the front seat and try and get a bit of the instrumentation of the old car and the steering wheel. What we're going to do here is a typical pose shot. We're going to take photos including the flowers and we're going to take it portrait so we can get the bride and groom in the background. And what I'm also going to do is I've focused on the flowers for one shot. Now I'm going to focus on the bride and groom instead and had the flowers out of focus.
and that will give us a beautiful shot of the car, the flowers, the bride and groom at the church. When you're focusing on um, something up close or far away, you can use autofocus or you can use a manual focus. Now I find that it's better and quicker in this situation to use autofocus. You can focus on the flowers, halfway press your button down, then move the camera up and it'll still stay focused at the flowers, but then center the shot that you want. What we're going to do here now is take a very up front shot of the car, which is going to be the major part of the photo. Two thirds of the photo is going to be the front of this car and in the background we're going to have the bride and groom and notice I've put the flowers here on the car because they're always interested in the flowers that they've chosen for the day. Now as we move up the back here we're going to pose these two lovers together. Now we'll get you over here the groom and we'll get the bride to put her arms around the groom's neck and we'll get the groom to hold here and they're just talking to each other and we'll get a number of shots here but remember we're looking down the car these two will be out of focus the main focus is the front of the car and the flowers this is a real wide angle are you ready? okay bride and groom looking at each other Here we've got a lovely shot looking along the angle of the car. If we just bring the camera around here so you can see the angle that I took. I'm down low and it was a portrait shot, not landscape, portrait. That would look a lovely photo for maybe the front of the wedding album. Remember you've arrived at church, the bride, she may even have come late. You've got the pressure now is on because you've got a congregation of people waiting inside for the bride. Um, you've got the guys all standing up the front of the church, nervous. You've got to get these photos. Don't rush these photos. They're timeless, priceless photos for the bride to look at later. Let them wait a little bit longer. Get the photos right. It's great to come the day before, suss the church out, look at all the angles of where you'll take photos, and we'll have a look around in a minute of where we could pose the bride in this church. Also, we want to get those photos, nice photos of the bride and groom within about 10 minutes, no longer. What's very too important to remember is you've got a lot of different light situations inside a church. Up the end, we have natural daylight coming through the stained glass windows. We have the sun coming through the side windows. We have various spotlights, etc. Um, all different globes. What we've got to aim to do is put the speed up of your camera or use a faster film. A 400 film would be great for this situation. We're going to use flash and non-flash. The only time we can use flash in a church is when we're close to the bride and groom because the flash is hopeless over 10 feet. It also can be annoying to the minister and to the church uh, congregation, someone buzzing around with the flash going. Always ask your minister beforehand what they're happy for you to do and what not. We're going to use a tripod in the church for shots where we're back a long way. We can't use a flash. We're using a slow speed on our camera with 400 film to capture the ambient light and it'll light up the church beautifully, but we can't hand hold the camera. Definitely need a tripod, but when we're up close to the bride and groom, we need to be um, there with a flash uh, if there's not much light. When we're taking photos in a church, the first photos we want to get nailed away when there's not much happening in the service but songs, some prayers, maybe a singer, etc., is to get a long-range photo of the whole church. Now what we need to do is take this landscape uh, in, or portrait. Now I'm going to take this one portrait first then we're going to move around to a landscape shot. Now remember we're at 400 and uh, a slow speed so we're again using the tripod. Now this shot is taken without a flash because our flash won't reach much past 10 pews and it will make the rest of the room go dark. 
So we want to get, steer away from that as much as possible. So definitely use a tripod for all of these type of shots. At the early part of the service, we've got about a good 15 minutes to get this particular shot. Now I've shot with a wide angle lens to get everybody in, but now I'm going to change to a zoom lens so I can zoom in more on the bride and the groom. Don't forget here we're going to zoom in on the bride and groom using a good lens, a 150-200 lens, and we're going to take the shot 400 speed or 400 film. And always don't forget to put it on a tripod because we need a slow exposure to bring up the ambient light. One, two, three. What we're going to do now is take it, we've taken the back shot, we're going to take a side shot looking at the bride and the groom. We're first going to pick up a shot of the groom and then we're going to go over to the other side and take a shot of the bride. Now we're well out of the way of the congregation here. We've moved up the side of the aisles. We're still out of the way. We've been unintrusive in the whole shoot so far. Three. We're taking the photos now from the front of the church, still with no flash. I've set the camera on a tripod again with the same settings. And what we can't do is speak to the bride and groom and say, hey, move in together or something like this. So before you actually shoot the bride and groom, earlier that day or the day before, you tell them some, if you say, go like this, that means come together closer or chin up. Just give them a few little signs that they understand and they'll do that because now we're going to have a minister standing here marrying them. And that's the shot. We want to get a photo behind with them looking forward or looking down with the minister so we can't actually speak during the service. We're going to take the photo and then move again, no flash again. Now if you're taking photos of a tall groom and a short bride, always shoot for the bride. Try and have the camera at her tummy level and you'll get a perfect perspective of her body. Because if we're taking this as a fashion shoot, we'd be down low trying to make her look tall. But this will make the uh, groom look ridiculously tall. So always shoot right at the middle of the bride, camera height. At this point, I've switched my camera over to automatic and I've put my uh, flash back on so it will automatically set the camera. I'm shooting this at uh, 6.7 at a 125th at 400 speed film. Now typically, the priest will stand behind or a rector or a minister will stand behind and when the rings are exchanged, this is perfectly acceptable for the uh, cameraman to come up and take a photo of that action happening. However, if Glenn puts on the ring like this, you put the ring on, he's hiding with his hand the ring. There's no way I can get in there to find it. I'd have to be on a ladder coming down. So it's really important to share with the bride and groom before they're married how to do this. So we've taught Glenn to hold her hand and put the ring on so we can get a lovely photo of that because this is a timeless photo of when they're actually exchanging the rings which is important to them and not important to everybody else so if everybody else has to wait for an extra couple of seconds it doesn't matter we need that shot now part of the pre-training of the bride and groom to get the best shots possible on the day is the bride's first kiss now it's important, most people just throw this over and kiss the bride and you've lost the shot. You're lucky to get the shot and it's all over the place. So it's important to teach them to go, first step is to hold, we take that photo. Second step is about there, we take another photo. Third step is going back. And fourth step, we take a photo of the bride kissing, kissing the groom. Okay.
And that's how we do it. It's a three step. Grab, move up, pull down and then kiss. And you've got the shots perfectly. It's not a rushed shot and you've got to teach the bride and groom this is going to be a great shot for your album. Let's spend a little bit of time getting this shot. Don't worry about other people who might come up with their cameras trying to get a shot. You're the cameraman for the day. You have the best spot and you're going to get the shot for them. At this stage the bride and groom have been pronounced man and wife and they're going to sign the register. We're not going to do this now but normally they'd lead you off to the side or to a table to actually sign. Now it's a really staged shot. There's some things they have to sign. If you've missed the shot, ask them to hold the pen again and pretend to be signing because it's still shot. It's not a video. And it's always great to get the whole side of the bride as she's signing. Don't just get the hands because it's a, a shot of an action. And we get that of the bride and the groom, the best man and the, uh, the uh, maid of honour. When the bride first enters the church, coming down the aisle, you've got to teach your bride to actually walk slowly and to stop and pause with her father or whoever's giving her away at the time so you can get that shot. Kneel down, get the shot, then let it go. But ask, just give a simple sign like that, bend down, take the shot and then move back. She'll come in further. You're getting more of the congregation. Like that again, take the shot and maybe when she gets up near the front, take the photo again. When the ceremony's finished and the bride and groom are making their way down through the congregation, you've got to make it your business to get down there first and take the pride of position for your photo. Get down there, take the photo, you may do the stop sign again, and that's great because it'll often bank up the, the rest of the bridal party and fill up the picture more and give you a, a more action. Now at this stage, we're okay to use the flash in the church and we take as many flashes as we like and it'll be interesting because when they're walking down they'll stop and kiss different people and they're great shots to get. But remember, you've got to be outside the church first before the doors are open so you can get them coming out. Always remember, it's you who's being paid to get these photos. And other photographers, uh, family and friends will be around. Don't get out of their way. You're paid to get the right photos. So when you get out the back, don't worry about their flashes going off and interrupting yours because a flash is just a millionth of a second and it's not going to interrupt. You're not going to be at the same time. So don't worry about that as being a problem. After the uh, guests have been introduced to the bride and groom outside and all the photos have been taken and the guests are milling around together, you might like to bring the bride and groom just themselves back into the empty church because this is the only time you'll get the two of them together. Because remember they arrive separately to start with and you might pose them. Tamara, just come down here. Maybe the bride just leaning against, just like that looking down or looking away and the groom standing in the background a little bit out of focus and this would make a lovely shot from about 10 feet back looking forward we'll take that shot right now and again tomorrow thanks as a photographer, you've got to take every opportunity that comes along. Over here, we've got some lovely sunlight coming through the uh, church windows, and we're going to take advantage of this to get some natural daylight shots without anybody in here. OK, Jamara, look around uh, up over this way a bit more. That's it, lovely. Now, I'll get you to look around more towards the... That's it, just like that. here is the bride and groom leaving the church. But I'm going to bring the doors in a little bit just to frame the bride and groom. It's going to be a close-up. I'm not going to do it portrait. I'm going to do it landscape first and see what it looks like then do a portrait.
And again, Glenn, smile at her. Look at her smile. Beautiful. Okay. We're outside now looking for opportunities of where to pose. Now there are opportunities everywhere, even if you sit the girl on the ground and look straight down. Tamara, just come and sit maybe on the bottom step here. Now this sort of shot taking looking down, we'd spread the dress out as much as we can in a circular motion. And we could have the bride then looking up at you and we'd take the photo from here looking down. Okay, we'll now move over to somewhere else. I've seen a small door. Often brides can look great in front of a small door instead of this large door. Because we have a sign here on the wall, we'll get the bride to stand right up the top stair. And we may get her to put one hand up here. The other hand, maybe just there. Now we're going to look around and see what else we've got here. Here, we've got a bubbler. Now this can be the bride having a quick drink out of the bubbler at the church. Great shot. Let's go and do it. Remember that the bride must keep a dress up high. We don't want it looking dirty for the reception. Yeah. Drop the dress now. Now again, look up. Great. A lovely shot there. Often a shot with the bride walking, lifting her dress up, showing the shoes can be a great shot. Let's go and do that shot right now. What we're going to do now, we've set the groom just standing, leaning casually against the railing of the church here. We're going to get the bride to just drop her dress. We're going to get her to pull it up at the front each side one hand and one hand and she's going to walk past lifting it up walking past looking this way looking away from the groom and we're going to capture that movement picture with a slow uh, speed on our camera great We've got a beautiful shot there of the bride walking past now. It's a movement shot which makes it more exciting. The church service is finished. The bride and groom are married. The, uh, the cars have taken off to location now. Now it may be at the beach, it may be in a park, it may be in inner city uh, industrial area. We're now looking to take photos of the bride and groom with the bridal party. Now what we're going to do here is try and get the bridal party in the background, just as a group talking amongst themselves with the bride and groom in the foreground, in focus. The others are all out of focus, that can be a great shot, other times you might have the whole group, including the groom, talking together in a group, maybe sipping on champagne, and we may have the bride walking past with the dress up, with the shoes, uh, pay no attention to them, and that can be a great shot too. We've got to include the uh, bride and groom, the parents, uh, the best man, the, uh, the uh, matron of honour in these shots with the bride and groom separately, together and the group as a group by themselves. Sometimes shooting the group by themselves without the bride and groom, they can be just stirring around, uh, playing up. You want horse play and you want lots of fun. With the bridal group, with the bride and groom, we're going to use about a hundred shots here because again, we don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work. Remember, half the bridal party will have their eyes closed at the wrong time. So get many more shots than you think you need. Let me give you some great tips for shooting weddings. 
and I've learnt the hard way because I've tripped up just like you will with the early weddings you'll do. Be in the background as much as possible. Speak to the minister or celebrant beforehand, get them on side, ask them what you're allowed to do and how much flash you can do. Be prepared for any situation. Rain, the annoying guest who'll keep pulling you away for a shot of him and his family and mates when you might miss the actual, actual shots of the wedding that you need to get. Car breakdown, having your, uh, a plan. If your car breaks down, you've got someone you can ring who will get you picked up and taken or a taxi car. Always be early. I had a friend leave on time for a wedding, got held up, and he didn't get to the wedding to shoot that wedding until after the ceremony was completely over. Take as many shots as you can because remember, people do blink. Make up a small book of wedding poses and we'll look at that shortly back at the studio. Ask a bride before the wedding to make a list of shots she must have because you don't know who's come from out of town and mightn't get in the shot and also you don't know who the aunties and uncles are that need to be photographed so get the bride to ask her mother to have that as a job and she'll feel important on the day she knows who they are and get her to bring the people to you to photograph. Keep your equipment close by. Try and take as much equipment as you can on your person or leave it somewhere in case you have an equipment failure, batteries go, you can quickly go, change a lens, have it right nearby. Have a couple of, maybe they call them bum bags or some jacket with a lot of pockets in so you can actually uh, keep the stuff on you. If shooting with film, have one film with black and white, one film with colour. Take your mobile phone, by all means, take numbers of the, uh, the wedding car drivers, uh, the best man, um, anyone else you can think of who's a part of the bridal because you can, going to a location you can get lost quite easily because oftentimes you don't know where it is, they haven't been there the first time either. But remember to turn that mobile phone off before you go into church. Be friendly with everybody you meet at the wedding. Always be smiling. Show your teeth, fresh breath, hand out your business card to everybody because the chances are there'll be four or five other people there thinking about getting married soon too. Plan every shot, especially on location, and tick them off on a list after you've got each shot. Remember, when you're shooting, think, am I going to shoot portrait or landscape? Is the wedding album going to be landscape? So landscape shots would be great. If it's going to be portrait, think, well, I've got to take a lot of portrait shots. Try and do a nice mix of both. Shoot lots of photos of guests because a lot of the time, wedding photographers concentrate on the bride and groom and forget about all the guests where the bride and groom want to have the memory of who was at their wedding, the uncles, aunties, of people having a good time at their wedding. That's what they really want to know. And remember, take shots at a distance. Get back and take overall shots because wedding photographers have a tendency to take everything up close. Now we're back in the studio, we'll just talk a little bit about putting a posing book together. Firstly, Take photos like this out of magazines. Look through bridal magazines, find the photos that you particularly like, pull them out, scan them on a scanner into your computer and readjust the size so they all end up a size that's business card size. Cut them out and then put them into a business card folder. This is just available in any stationery shop. Now what you want to do here is try and put them in some sort of order where they're moving from the church into uh, on location ideas. But you can get lots of photos there and you can make some notes for yourself when you put them in. Bride with father, formal pose, etc, etc. If you do this, keep this in a pocket like this. This is why we have a, a, a coat or something with many pockets. You can quickly flip it out and say, yeah, look at the people and say, no, slightly over this way and get them right. They don't have to know what you're looking at and it gives you a good memory of what you want. Remember, if you don't have a scanner or someone who has one, 
just photograph each picture and when you have them printed, tell your um, print shop what size that you'd like them printed to and uh, you may be able to just get them put all ready to the size to go straight into your book. After you've shot a wedding and put a lot of effort in, don't take your films to get developed at your local photo lab in a supermarket. You want to go to a professional lab that will look at each photo and adjust the lightness and darkness and give you beautiful prints and a lot of times they'll be half the price than what you'd pay at these small places who really won't look after you. When you're starting off, every business must market. The market is out there, it's a pie, and you've got to cut a piece of that pie for yourself. You need to look professional. You need a really good looking business card with your very best shot on it, with your details on the background. You may need a with compliments. You need a letterhead. And maybe you'll need a, a deal of a conglomerate of your best pictures that you can include with your quote. In this day and age, with everybody becoming computer savvy, you need to have a website. It doesn't matter how simple it is, just a simple one picture with your phone number, with just a little bit of uh, what you do and why you're different. Hand out business cards at places where you think potential brides may be. It's no use going to a bowling club and handing them out there. You must find where young people are, because the majority of people getting married are young they need to have your business card in their hand. Practice your photography. Go to, just turn up to any wedding. Go past a church, look at most churches, there are weddings on the weekend. Just go there, see the bride arrive, just stand there and take photos. No one will know that you're not a friend. And watch the photographer who's actually taking the photos who's being paid and try and copy the angles, keep out of his way of course, but you'll learn by taking photos of other people's weddings. Try and get the shots that they're doing. Offer to photograph for a friend's wedding or a cousin's wedding and say, look, I'll turn up and do it free of charge for you, but you've got to pay for the film and the prints. Now go overboard with the amount of photos and film you use because they're not paying a couple of thousand dollars for you, so they can afford to pay for 20 rolls of film. Take lots of photos. Don't show them the photos that didn't come out with his eyes closed. Just cut them out. Give them just the good ones. And now you're starting to get a repertoire that you can use for your actual book that you're going to make up and show people of your work. Advertising gets results. Advertising your phone book, your local yellow pages, doesn't have to be a big, a big ad. You can get people with a small ad, your local newspaper, bride magazines, uh, wedding ho web host sites, you can get in there for maybe two or three hundred dollars. Have at least four packages to offer. A basic package going up to a package that you think people wouldn't even buy. You'd be surprised what they will buy. When they ring, have a sales spiel already worked out. Have four or five points of why you're good and why they should deal with you rather than somebody else. When they make a booking, fill in a form. You'll see a form soon come up on your screen listing the church, where it's going to be, what time, how many people in the, the party. And money matters. Let's look at this. They've got to put a deposit down of maybe $250 to book you for a certain date. Because remember, once you're booked for that date, you can't book anybody else. And you don't want anybody making a, a booking and cancelling on you. Also, you must collect all the payments before the actual wedding is takes place. So seven days before the wedding takes place, you've been totally paid for the wedding. Today in our business, about 50% of the brides ask us to go and shoot their wedding digitally or by film and give them a CD of the day where they've got the rights to the actual photos. And we're happy to do this because then we're not involved in putting a, a large album together and spending many hours of time. Because for a wedding, you might be hired for about $100 an hour, but sitting with a bride putting that album together, your time drops down to about $10 an hour. Now we've shown you how to do the wedding photography, you can have a rewarding career. 
in this line of work and remember have a great time because it's a fun time around weddings it's not funerals we're shooting this is a happy occasion we're grabbing the moments of their life that they're going to live in their history forever have a great time and